Now let's look at timing using structured text and a micro 810 PLC. Now I've got to remember this is a program that's running in an interrupt. Every interrupt it executes the program. So one way to keep track of timing is just count how many interrupts have gone by. When I get to a thousand interrupts, a thousand being a nice number, I'll reset. So this is basically a ring counter. Counts to zero to nine 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 repeats. When I get to five hundred, I'll just toggle output two. This is a toggle command. Output two is not output two. It happens once every five hundred counts. Here we put the program into the structure text for the PLC, compiled it, and now we'll try to download it. Note that again, equals is compare, double equals is assign. Pascal is slightly different than C in that way. Running the program and going into debug mode, we're going to do a right click show the variables, and I want to look at count. Here you can see count is counting up to a thousand. When it gets to 500, the red light toggles. This is one way to keep track of timing. Not preferred though, it depends upon the loop timing. You do have timer blocks in letter logic, that's a better way to do it. So going through some of the timer blocks. Timer pulse. What a timer pulse does is if I hold the input pin on long enough, the output will go high. So if I have a short input pin, it ignores me. If I hold it on for 3.45 seconds, well, try that again. When I hit the input button, the output goes high and stays on for 3.45 seconds, regardless how long I hold the button. The ladder diagram for a timer pulse looks like this. When I hit button 1, Timer pulse turns on and it stays on for 3.45 seconds. In structured text, it'd be TP, in this case instance 1. Here is the input, digital input 0. Here's your preset time, 3 seconds, 456 milliseconds. Q, this is where the notation is kind of a, a little bit odd. Um, to access Q, there'd be timer pulse instance one dot Q. Uh, the running time isn't really needed. I'm just going to do that so you can see what's happening in debug mode. Timer pulse instance one elapsed time is going to be saved in timer one time. This has to be a variable of type time. To input that, I'd have TP. That's a timer pulse. Do a right click, show instruction variable. This is going to be timer pulse instance one, and here are the different types of variables. I need a boolean in and a preset time. The boolean in would be IO digital input one. It'd be two seconds. 3.5 milliseconds. I now want to have a variable called timer one time. I'll do a right click, show variable selector. I want to have a variable type time. Somewhere time. And if I look at properties, it's a variable type time is equal to timer pulse instance one dot uh, let's see elapsed time and the output goes to digital output zero so output zero is equal to timer pulse one dot cube here's the output So now when you run it and go in debug mode, I can sit there and look at the elapsed time and timer one time. Right click, show variable monitoring. There it is. As I hold down the button, it 
So hold down the correct button, button one. You can see that the time is counting up to two seconds, three, four, five milliseconds. And the light stays on for that long. Three pulse, press two, three, four, five. Now notice in the blocks for timer pulse, the variables that are input are passed to it. That would be the input one and the time. The output variables like ET, Q, those are accessed through this dot notation. Okay, so that was a timer pulse. Next, let's look, look at a on timer. Here the functionality, I have to hold the button on for TN seconds. If it's held on that long, it recognizes it and will turn on the output. This is to avoid accidentally bumping the button and having it recognize it. You have to hold it on to, for it to re realize it. In ladder diagrams, that's expressed as follows. Sorry, but my word processor there. In a ladder diagram, it looks like this. When input 2 is pressed, um, the output will turn on if it's held on for 4 seconds. In structured text, that would be timer on, instance 1. Here's the input, digital input 2, 3, one of those. If it's held on for 4 seconds, then Q turns high, and that saved as output 0. And the elapsed time is saved as timer 1 time. Okay, magically, I just changed the numbers to match the diagram. Input 2 drives output 1 after 4 seconds. That's input. If I type in T on, right click, I'll do T on instance 1. And I need a Boolean in. Input 2 for 4 seconds. Remember one time, and we're using that variable. It's T on, elapsed time. Okay, missed it. Elapsed time. And output 0. Make that output 1 is T on instance 1 is Q. Compiling and downloading. Now it's downloaded. I can sit there and run it. Going into debug mode just for fun. Showing variables. I can look at timer one time. So hold down button 2. It starts counting. When I get to 4 seconds, the light turns on. If I hold it down momentarily, I can accidentally bump the button. If it doesn't get to 4 seconds, the output stays off. Once you get to 4 seconds, it turns on. As soon as I release, it turns off. Off timer. Once the light turns on, it will stay on for preset time. In the ladder diagram, it's set up as so. I, if I hold down input 3, the output will stay on for 5 seconds after I release. In structured text, that's T off. Here's the push button. When I hold down input 3, the light stays on, output 2 stays on for 5 seconds. Compiling and downloading, saving some time there. When I hold down button 3, the output stays on as long as I hold down the button. When I release it, it stays on for 5 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Reap touch stays on for 5 seconds. So with timers, you can toggle an output fairly easily. For example, suppose I want to toggle the yellow light every 2 seconds. With a ladder diagram, that would be the following. I'd use an on block where the output clears the clock every two seconds. Every time it clears it, I run through a T flip flop. In the structured text, I do the following. If Q is true, I'll toggle output 1 and then run timer 1. 
it's going to be cleared on not Q every two seconds and display the elapsed time just for fun. Compiling, downloading, going to debugger mode, and then showing the variables with a right click. You can see what's happening. Timer 1 time is running. When it gets to 2 seconds, Q is set. When Q is set, it toggles output 1. It also clears the timer, which looks like the following. Set, clear, every 2 seconds. You can also do a green, yellow, red stoplight. This is the ladder diagram we did before. Initially start out with the green light. When green is on, it counts to 10 seconds. It turns on the yellow light. When yellow is on, it then waits 2 seconds, then turns on the red, turns off the yellow. Red stays on for 15 seconds, then turns off the red. The ladder diagram looks as follows. Here's the first line of code. Green light is on if it's not red and yellow. I'll turn on timer 1 as long as the green light is on for 5 seconds. Uh, once it gets to 5 seconds, then the yellow light is turned on. When the yellow light is on, it's held on for one second. After one second, it turns on the red light. When the red light is on for three seconds, I sped it up so I don't have to wait so long, it then turns off the red light. That's what you're seeing here. Red light's on for three seconds. Green light turns on for five seconds. Yellow for one second, then red light go under debug mode, you can see the time's running. So there's the times. Five seconds, one second, three seconds, five seconds, One second, three seconds. That about wraps up some of the timer blocks.